ozone is used to clean swimming pools and casinos, but can it help boost your immune system? This is Robert Manny, host of Guys Guys TV, and this week my special guest is author Mark Seifer. We're going to talk all about ozone, and it starts right here, right now on Guys Guys TV. You can also catch me on KCAA Radio here in Southern California, Guys Guys Radio, my worldwide podcast, and now we're on UK Health Radio all weekend long. Guys Guys TV, Guys Guys Radio, thanks for your support. Okay, Guys Guys Radio, the very famous interview portion of our show that we've come to know and love, and I've got a special guest today. Today, we're going to talk about ozone, all types of ozone. Everybody knows the ozone layer in the atmosphere, and ozone can clean a lot of things, and there's ozone therapy, and we've got an expert on that, a return guest. His name is Mark J. Seifer. We talked about Tesla on here a few months ago. It was a very successful show, so we're going to do it again, and we're going to focus on ozone, ozone therapy, alternative health. Let me tell you a little bit about Mark. He's the author of over 100 articles and a dozen books, including the acclaimed Wizard, The Life and Times of Nikola Tesla. And Tesla actually has some things to do with ozone also, so that should be interesting. Uh, Mark has lectured at Brandeis, Oxford, Cambridge, West Point, the UN, featured in Washington Post, Scientific American, MIT Tech Review, New York Times, The Economist, and he's appeared all over coast to coast with George Norrie, BBC, NPR, History Channel, and of course, Guys Guys Radio. He's back with us today. So welcome back to Guys Guys Radio, Mark Seifer. How are you doing, Mark? Great, Robert. So good to see you. And it's like we're sitting in the same room. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's start at the beginning for for our listeners and for our audience who are so interested in your work and the, the the word ozone comes up and everybody has heard the word but not many people really know the dimensionality dimensionality of of what ozone is the properties of it so what is ozone where does it come from and how can it contribute to health and well-being so let's start at the beginning what is ozone and where does it come from ozone is is simply a different form of oxygen we think of h2o you know it's a H2O, uh, so it's two uh, you know, molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen, you have water. So oxygen by itself is O2. So in the atmosphere, there's oxygen's O2. But when cosmic rays hit the O2, it transforms it into O3. And so that's what ozone is. It's, a, it's a, an unstable form of oxygen. So during lightning storms, you can kind of smell that atmosphere that's really uh, fresh. That's the ozone in the atmosphere. And what happens, which I learned in, in writing this book, which was just so amazing to me, is that every morning the sun comes out, uh, you know, on, in daylight and hits the atmosphere, which is O2, which has, you know, it's nitrogen and oxygen. The O2 converts into O3 and rises up to the top of the atmosphere, creates the ozone layer every single day. And, and these, these, uh, this layer of ozone then blocks, prevents additional cosmic rays from hitting the Earth every day. Without the ozone layer, there would be no life on the Earth because the cosmic rays would burn up the life that, that exists. So ozone is so essential for our life and also for protecting the planet. But the, to me, the punchline here, Robert, though, is, is when I studied this, I'm thinking, you know, the ozone layer, oh, wow, the ozone layer, and it's blue. So there's some theories that the blue sky is actually the ozone on the top of the sky. But the punchline for me is the thickness of the ozone layer. I'm thinking a mile, two miles, you know. It's this thick. It's less than an inch thick. So that tiny little shell at the top of our atmosphere is what protects all life on the Earth. And it, it gives me a whole different feeling about the fragility of life the magnificence of how fortunate we are on this planet to have life and how important the ozone layer really is. And so that's some of the stuff about the beginnings of ozone. So um, it's interesting. Let's talk a little bit more about that ozone layer because I remember when I traveled on business to Australia and uh, they said, okay, the ozone layer down around the Sydney area had been kind of burned off or whatever. And I went to the beach and um, I got a really bad sunburn really fast. I didn't realize it would be that quick. So what? how does that happen and can that be repaired? Well, some of these scientists realize that these fluorocarbons, we used to have these spray bottles 
they were re releasing a chemical which would destroy thousands and thousands of O3 molecules in the atmosphere. So they outlawed those and that helped repair the ozone layer. Um, another thing about the ozone layer, they often talk about ozone with pollution. So they'll give you the ozone you know, figures you know, during a polluted area. And so people have this negative feeling, ozone, ozone must be bad. But in fact, what the ozone has done, done is it's attached itself to all the pollutants in the atmosphere. And so it's not the ozone that's bad, it's, it's its attachment to the atmosphere. So can the ozone layer be repaired? It has been repaired, but obviously the less that we uh, you know, put into the atmosphere you know, through uh, you know, driving gasoline run cars or uh, coal-operated uh, power plants, we have to reduce all that and you know, use renewable energy. And I think that would help uh, bring back the ozone layer completely. But you're right, it has been damaged here and there, particularly around Australia. Now, why I'm curious um, around Australia because you wouldn't think of Australia as a really heavy. I could be wrong. Heavy manufacturing place versus some of the other urban centers around the world. Why do you think that the ozone layer there got depleted, and and is it coming back? It's a great question. I don't totally know the answer. Um, I mean, China's got a tremendous amount of pollution, and uh, I don't know what the air currents are uh, down there, but that might play a role um, what, uh, you know, during the crisis when we didn't have any uh, airplanes flying for a long period of time, people weren't driving, the ozone layer actually began to repair. So I, I think the key, I don't really know why in Australia, but I really think the key is, and everybody knows this, we have to move towards renewable energy. We have to not sap the earth of its natural elements, uh, you know, the gas and, and oil, and try to live within, you know, uh, the gift that has been given to us and appreciate its fragility. Um, but I don't totally know the answer to your question. Okay, fair enough. Um, in, do, do we know if on other planets or other um, planetary type objects like the moon or the planet Mars or Venus, do they also, the other planets in our solar system and our planetary group, do they have ozone also as ozone substance that's prevalent throughout the universe? or is it strictly something that's limited to Earth? What I did in my research, I wanted to study the immune system and I needed to study ozone because our actually our antibodies manufacture ozone. So I wanted to really understand how all this works. So I started to study the beginnings of life. How did life evolve on the Earth? It took several billion years for the first life form complicated life form to to appear and then we have you know the early plant life and the amoebas and then all of a sudden it's, it's accelerated and you have the dinosaurs and mammals and then we're here but if we go all the way back to the beginning the early plant life photosynthesis transforms oxygen o2 uh it creates oxygen from the atmosphere so the atmosphere goes down hits the plant life and then builds up the oxygen so i don't know what the atmosphere was when the earth began but as life evolved, 20% of the atmosphere is oxygen, 80% is, is nitrogen. Um, there's a tiny little percentage, and that, that tiny little percentage includes ozone and other things. Um, for instance, um, I, I remember as a kid, I, I grew up on Long Island in New York, and uh, the people out west had something called goiter, they're, they're swelling up with the neck. And why didn't we have it? We were breathing in iodine from the uh, oceans. And that always amazed me. So they have iodine in the atmosphere that humans need to, for, simply for our health in the same sense. So to answer your question, I think ozone is probably very rare uh, outside of the, of the planet Earth. And it was created essentially uh, through this combination of photosynthesis and then the sunlight transforming the O2 into O3. And what's so strange about this is if the, the sunlight is changing O2 into O3, which is creating the ozone layer, which is stopping more of the sunlight from, from doing this. So it's an odd kind of a thing. It's kind of contradictory that the, the cosmic rays create ozone and then the ozone blocks the cosmic rays. It's, it's amazing. You know, it's interesting. Your, your name of your book and Mark's book is the new one's called Ozone Therapy for the Treatment of Viruses, the Science and the Promise, promise of Healing with Ozone. And we're going to get into all of that. But you mentioned uh, iodine and iodine coming from the ocean. And so many people are iodine de deficient. And I think you can do a test where you put a little drop of iodine on your skin. And if it stays there, 
then you have enough iodine. But if it sinks in, like over five minutes or so, if it disappears, that means that your body needs the iodine. At least that's what a practitioner told me. So many people who have thyroid issues take iodine. And just for general health, most people are iodine deficient from what I understand. Now, I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on TV. I'm just a regular guy's <laughs> guy. So uh, that's all, all disclaimers here. We're just having a conversation. But in the terms of like iodine that we can take it in little droplets and put it in water, and if ozone is created in the atmosphere, is there a way of um, ozone being made into a liquid? Oh, yes, it can be. Um, and uh, that's one of the dangers. I mean, ozone in, 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 in extreme co in concentration can be dangerous. It's a disinfectant. So on the positive side, let's say a, a hospital room has been infected. They can go in with an ozone generator and disinfect the room. What's so nice about it, you can, if you if it was in a liquid form, you could spray the whole room with O3, and in a couple of hours, it would be back to O2 because it's a disabled, you know, it's a it's a, a an unstable form of oxygen. So there's it's unlike um, uh, chlorine. You could go in and clean the room with chlorine, then you got that ugly smell of, of the chlor chlorine and that the burning sensation of chlorine. So that's the beauty of ozone, but you won't, you don't want to be in the room when you're spraying so much, you know, uh, in, into it. So the, the in ozone therapy, you're only using a very small amount of ozone, you're mostly using oxygen and it's, and it's the understanding of how to use it. It's kind of like fire, you know, uh, fire is very dangerous, but if you know how to handle fire, it's an incredible gift, you know, again, from the gods that, that we have. Ozone's the same kind of way. Okay, we'll get into the more controversial aspects of ozone therapy because the, you know, the FDA and the medical community hasn't fully embraced it yet. And I think part of it is based on what you said, because it has to be used the right way. Now, ozone can be used to clean pools as an alternative to chlorine. As you were mentioning chlorine and ozone, am I correct in that, that you can clean a pool with ozone? Yeah, in fact, finally, what happened was the Europeans were coming and they were swimming in America and uh, they said, Ooh, what's what's wrong with your swimming pools? And they said, well, we're using chlorine. You're using chlorine, we use ozone. So in Europe, they were using ozone. And now the Olympic uh, Committee has decided that all the Olympic pools will be cleaned with ozone. It's a, it's a you know a UV light that they use and the water goes in and it's very clear. And the joke is, is that, you know, you're in some crazy place and you'd rather drink the water from the swimming pool than coming out of the tap because it's that pure, that it's that good, uh, you know, a disinfectant. So yes, they're in, and, and also, you know, it's municipal, like sewerage and all that, they, they used in, in, uh, in uh, municipal cities to uh, clean sewerage and, and all that. So it's very, very powerful. And again, it's, think of it like fire, use it the correct way. It's a wonderful tool. Um, and, so as, as, as part of that, Mark, then, how and when can ozone be dangerous? It can be dangerous in, in very intense uh, amounts. Um, in, in, again, in ozone therapy, it's 97% pure oxygen and 3% ozone. Um, you mentioned you know, the FDA. They talk about the dangers of it, but they're, but they're misunderstanding that every single medical doctor who uses it knows it's dangerous. You don't just inject pure ozone into the, into the bloodstream. You inject 97% oxygen and a tiny little amount of ozone. And that combination uh, increases the, the immune system, boosts the immune system ability to fight off disease and allows the, the uh, body to absorb oxygen in a more powerful form. One thing I read, which is so obvious, but you, you just don't think about this. Uh, those people in Turkey in the horrible uh, earthquake, some of them were, were without food for 7, 10, 11, 12 days. You can't exist without oxygen for three or four or five minutes. That's it. We need oxygen all the time. So if you can boost the ability to, to absorb oxygen, it simply boosts the immune system, makes you more powerful in, in fighting off any diseases. And that's really all ozone therapy is. It's actually a misnomer. It should be called oxygen ozone therapy because it's really 97% pure oxygen. Now, with all of the advent of so many new um, homeopathic and natural healing alternatives, quote unquote, versus allopathy, um, and we're going back to Ayurvedic and Chinese traditional medicine, and you have 
chiropractors and we have uh, cranial sacral and Reiki and so many other things. Are there places, and now you can go into these med beds and there's sound healing. Are there places that consumers can go where they can, um, like they get an IV, I see for vitamins and stuff. Can Are people getting, consumers going out there and getting ozone? Is that illegal? Is, is that legal or illegal? Can, can that be administered? Is it being done? Yes, it is legal. And it's a very interesting story. Uh, about 1990, uh, Robert Atkins, you know, the Atkins diet guy, he was using ozone to treat cancer patients and the FDA came down hard on him and they sued him and he countersued and the courts ruled that they, they were unable to uh, establish uh, their case. Um, and so because uh, Atkins won, it allowed the entire country to use ozone. So even though there's an FDA regulation warning people against it, uh, there are at least 350 ozone therapists around the country. And all you have to do is go online and you can find them. And they're medical doctors. Uh, most of them are medical doctors. Um, and it's and it's used all the time. It's just a, it's a wonderful tool. But again, uh, you know, you want it by people that know what they're doing. No, but, uh, you know, in our country, uh, a lot of the medicine, uh, this, it's so busy, there's so many sick people. And a lot of it's about treatment and symptoms. And it's understandable. And there's a lot, not much stated about prevention and how to take care of yourself. That's a whole, there's a lot of information on that, but it's a different subject. So with ozone, is there any type of educational resources that people can tap into beyond your terrific book, Ozone Therapy, um, that they can tap into to learn more about ozone so they can make a wise decisions as to if this is something that's right for them or something they want to consider or something that just doesn't feel right? Yeah, there's a few books out there, uh, but uh, Frank Schallenberger, a doctor in Las Vegas, he's been an ozone therapist for 50 years, and the way he learned about it, he was in Germany. Um, and there was a, a, there's a book online called The Story of Ozone. They did a study of, you're not going to believe this, like six and a half million applications of ozone therapy by, by about five or 600 doctors over the last 40 years, from 1980 back, back to about 1950 uh, in Germany. There were only four deaths, only 40 cases of people that complained uh, about some type of irritation out of five and a half million applications. It's a very mild thing when, when done correctly. So I would suggest to answer directly, Frank Schallenberger has a newsletter and the, it's an excellent newsletter where he constantly gives you more and more information uh, about the, about the, you know, the, the positives. He also talks about something you've talked about too, and that is, you know, vitamin therapy and, and just, you know, maintaining health uh, that way as well. How about um, in terms of can consumers, um, similar to what I mentioned about, you know, you can take a couple of drops of iodine and put it in water and drink it. And supposedly if you take that on a regular basis, it helps boost you because uh, most people are iodine deficient. Are there ways for consumers to you know, we go to the we go to the health store, and there's everything from stinging needle nettles to, you know, everything you can think of to take. I don't I don't recall seeing anything about any type of ozone in a spray, in a bottle, in a pill, in a tab, in a capsule. Are there ways that uh, uh, or liquid? Are there ways that people can consume ozone if they choose to for their health? And yes, you can, you can get an ozone generator and put it in water and, and, and you know, it's, it, you're able to drink it. They tell you not to, um, and you can water the plants with it. But I have, I buy ozone pills. They're, 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 okay, that's what I was asking, yeah. So it's a vitamin pill that, that they in, inject the ozone into it. And is that, um, is that, uh, is that FDA approved or it's just, just, because a lot of stuff isn't, just out of yeah. curiosity. The problem, I think, with the FDA, they uh, they have a federal regulation, Title 21, which says ozone is a toxic gas with no medical application, no medical application. As I said, there's like 350 medical doctors in this right. state, in the country today. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other thing about it is that in 2001, uh, Paul Wentworth, who's a chemist from uh, Scripps Institute, discovered that our antibodies manufacture ozone. So if our antibodies manufacture ozone, then Title 21 has to be wrong. And I simply think that there should be uh, congressional hearings to, to look into Title 21. Can they prove that there is no medical application to it when you have medical doctors using it, when you have uh, Mr. Wentworth finding 
that our own body manufactures it, and that it's protecting the planet. I think that there's a disconnect here, and I think that you know we need to uh, look into that to find out more about how Title 21 came about and get into the history of it. But I think it's built on a false premise. Um, there's, a, there's there's a lot of um, in today's medicine, particularly with what's been going on, where you know this is approved and this isn't approved. Um, is there any efforts of a discussion about about something like ozone going on? Out you there? know, I was thinking about the chiropractors um, when I I was in Whiplash once, and one doctor wanted to you know fuse some of my vertebra, and I went to see a chiropractor, and and of course the insurance companies don't if you ever see a chiropractor. Right. right. When I was a kid, my, my brother was the, the uh, quarterback. And what happened, he got tackled. One shoulder was lower than the other shoulder. And I went with my dad and, and, uh, and my brother Bruce. And the chiropractor did this, that, and the other. And he walked out and his shoulders were straight. So anytime people would knock chiropractors, I would think back, man, that guy performed a miracle. And I think it's the same thing with the ozone therapists. They're getting a bad rap. But when you really study, they're wonderful people, uh, wonderful doctors. Uh, the two the, two of my co-workers, mm -hmm. I mean, co-workers uh, went to Sierra Leone to fight the Ebola uh, outbreak uh, to teach medical personnel their ozone therapy, risking their lives, uh, you know, to do that. They're good people. And I think uh, that the more uh, understanding we have of, of what's really going on, uh, the better off we'll be. Okay. Um, you mentioned uh, my special guest, a uh, return guest, Mark J. Seifer. PhD, the new book, Ozone Therapy, and we're talking about uh, as a treatment. Um, Nikola Tesla, who you've written two wonderful books about, uh, Wizard, and then uh, the new one about um, his efforts around wartime. What was the connection between Tesla and ozone? I got to go back to 1984. I was working on my doctorate, which was a, a, a study of why Tesla's name disappeared from the history books. And I was invited to speak in Colorado Springs at the first uh, Tesla Centennial Symposium. And uh, one of the other speakers was Dr. George Freebach. And I had a metascience quarterly, I had a parapsychology journal at the time. So I was covering every single lecture. So I went to that lecture and he said, he was a medical doctor, that he had a man that was dying of cancer, his body riddled with tumors. And he was injected him with 97% pure oxygen, 3% ozone, the tumors were shed and the guy was cured. That was 1984. I found a confirmation of that uh, in a, a science article uh, written by uh, Sweet K. Owen Lee, which said that ozone helps thwart the development of, of cancerous tumors in humans. Now, why was uh, this medical doctor there? The reason he was there was because in 1896, Tesla invented and patented an ozone generator, and he sold these ozone generators to med the medical community. In Germany, they really uh, used it a lot. They were helping uh, cure gangrene, uh, creating environments, ozone environments, which actually uh, killed the, the gangrene uh, you know, around people's legs and stuff. So that was the connection that I had uh, between uh, Nikola Tesla and ozone. And I basically forgot about it. And 25 years went by, and I learned about these two doctors that went to the, you know, the Ebola crisis and thinking, who risks their life to do this? So that's how I got interested in ozone. But Tesla is the one who led me there. He really led me there. And he came up with the idea of filtering it through oil. You can filter through oil so you can breathe it in. Uh, that's a, you know, a good way to purify uh, that process. Um, have you, have you marked, have you tried ozone therapy? I there's no ozone therapist around here. My the, one of my coworkers <laughs> is in New York City, and I want to go down and get treated. I haven't. Uh, I haven't had ozone therapy, but I'm, I, I would like can get, to. Can, can you do it in, in Manhattan in the city? Yes, yes. Dr. Howard Robbins on uh, 200 West uh, 57th Street, and there's another uh, medical doctor in, in New York City. Um, and there's, you know, uh, there's the Dr. Leibowitz in Los Angeles. Uh, wonderful guy, and uh, Dr. Robert Rowan in Santa Rosa, California. Um, they're all over. And I said, uh, Dr. Frank Schallenberger in Las Vegas. Um, now, so uh, many, many speak, medical doctors. Speaking of Las Vegas, um, from your book, it sounds like they use ozone in casinos to kind of clean up the uh, the air, the atmosphere there. How does that work? 
it, it absorbs the smoke and, and everything. It's this, uh, you know, it's this unstable form, O3, of oxygen, and it, it, bind, it binds to pollutants in the atmosphere. It's, it's amazing. It's truly amazing. How, how is it deployed? Does it come out of like a, with the, air, the ventilators or what? Yeah, they have ozone generators, which produce uh, ozone uh, to do that. Well, that's just amazing. And then in food processing, is ozone used in food processing, processing also? And if it's so, used, how? It's used in food processing. They will uh, take like a meat or something and you put in meat in the environment or fruits and vegetables in the environment. Uh, this is all FDA approved. So that they have been able to get that uh, uh, passed. Uh, but a very important study, you know, uh, Dr. Rowan got a call from Texas. This uh, man was dying from one of those superbugs, and he and they wanted him to go in uh, and treat this guy, and and the hospital wouldn't let him go in, and, and the guy died. But it is a way to to uh, purify those horrible superbugs, which are in so many different hospitals. They are using ozone when there's nobody in the room, but they should open, just begin to understand, like when Wentworth has found that our own antibodies are producing ozone for our own protection. We, we have to learn from the, from the medical doctors know what they're doing, uh, because I think it's a way to, to, uh, to treat that, the, those horrible situations in, in the hospitals. So they are, are they using ozone um, treatment in hospitals to clean rooms? And do, they, and do they use them in like the operating rooms? And how, do they, how, how is ozone used in hospitals? That's how it's used in, in uh, let's say, uh, to in di disinfect a room. Many hospitals will use ozone to do that. They won't use it medically for the person, but they will use it to disinfect a room. Got it. Now, around the world, Mark, and we're talking, uh, my special guest, Mark Seifer, we're talking about ozone and quote unquote ozone therapy. Are there other, and the U.S. has pretty stringent uh, policies when it comes to anything having to deal with uh, medical things that people can take. So uh, around the world, though, every country and area seems to have a different set of rules. Is ozone more wel welcomed in other areas of the planet than in the U versus the U.S.? That's a really difficult question to answer. I've been in touch with ozone therapists in, in Ecuador, in Sierra Leone, uh, even in China, um, in uh, Spain, um, and in Italy. Uh, there are ozone therapists all around. Uh, but there's been opposition by the FDA and there's been opposition by the World Health Organization. Um, so that's what's going on here. And again, I liken it to the chiropractors. We all know the chiropractors have not been treated uh, the way they should be. How about, um, how about like trials and uh, um, research? Is that being funded around the world? Are there independent studies? Are there studies funded by governments or medical uh, authorities, if you will? There are, and I have the bibliography in here, I've counted about 20 or 30 uh, studies that were done over the last 50 years uh, with Lyme disease, um, encephalitis, you know, there's all different kinds of diseases that they have done tests, uh, and, and, and they're all positive, they find that, that it works. So there have really been clinical trials, uh, there have been clinical trials, you know, in Spain, and in the United States, Dr. Dr. Uh, David Brownstein in uh, Michigan has done clinical trials. Uh, Dr. Hernandez in Spain has done clinical trials. So there are these uh, trials that have been done, but they have to fight against the FDA because the FDA has Title 21. So it's like uh, yeah, behind a, a rock and a hard place. It's really a, a you know, it's, it's a double whammy against the ozone therapists because they're not allowing them test because they're saying it's not legal, but they're also saying, yeah, but you can secretly do it as long as you don't announce that you do it. So it's a, it's a very strange situation. So you worked with on this book, um, some other very renowned physicians, uh, doctors. Tell us about how you found them, what brought you together and kind of what were the agreements and if there were any disagreements in terms of how you put the book together. Yeah. Um, once I got involved in, in studying this based on George Freebach, I started contacting ozone therapists and I came upon Dr. Howard Robbins, who's in New York City, and Dr. Robert Rowan in uh, California. And they met in uh, Kuala Lumpur about 15, 20 years ago and became fr immediate friends. And once the uh, Ebola erupted in, in uh, West Africa, uh, Dr. Rowan called Dr. Robbins and said, I wanna go out to, to Sierra Leone 
and uh, you know treat uh, Ebola with uh, you know teach medical personnel how to how to uh, uh, kill the Ebola virus. The Ebola virus has what's called a, an Achilles heel. It's its lipid envelope. It's the outer skin. And even though Ebola is very very dangerous, uh, ozone will disinfect it. So he said, I'm going to go fly out to this Ebola hot zone in Africa. And Dr. Robin says, what are you out of your ever-loving mind? <laughs> like, get it. And so Rowan said, well, I'm going anyway. And Robin said, I'm not going to let that guy get all the credit. So he, decided, <laughs> <laughs> so he decided to go with him. And the two of them flew out there. And I spent a week teaching all the medical personnel. They met the president of Sierra Leone. Uh, they treated him. Uh, and uh, Dr. Kobo Karu. Uh, Kojo Karu, who's still there, uh, who's using ozone therapy right now, uh, ran the hospital there. And uh, the World Health Organization, unfortunately, came in and threatened the, them that they take away all funding if they continue. But when med five medical personnel, four medical personnel, one uh, uh, a, 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 you know, a girl who was uh, going out with a medical guy, they all had Ebola. They all secretly got treated with ozone therapy and they were all cured. Um, so this has a 60% death rate. Six out of every 10 people who get Ebola die. So uh, Rowan and Robbins wrote this up in the Journal of Infectious Diseases. So it's in the literature. Um, but to answer your question, unfortunately, the World Health Organization needs to become more educated and the FDA needs to become more educated. And one of the best ozone generating machine companies in the world was in Canada, Longevity Research. It just closed down two weeks ago because of the pressure uh, from these two organizations. And I wrote to uh, President uh, Biden and uh, Prime Minister Trudeau. I said, this is an existential, existential threat to this planet. We need ozone generators. They disinfect, they kill viruses, they kill bacteria, they kill the superbug. And you've just knocked out one of the most important ozone generating companies in, in, in the country. Uh, you know, it's in Canada, but in North, North America. And I don't know, maybe I'll hear from them. I don't know, but uh, it's important. Well, it's, well, it's surely important. surely the, the powers that be have, uh, they provide in their response a, a rationale. What is the rationale that they provide. They say that ozone is too dangerous to play around with, it can't be regulated, or what? what is it they're saying, we can't get behind this because of what? It's actually built on a false premise. It starts in 1920. In 1920, these two uh, uh, scientists used, uh, you know, generated ozone and, and measured it, and it was very toxic, and indeed it was toxic. And the reason was they created ozone from the atmosphere. The atmosphere is 80% uh, nitrogen and 20% oxygen. So if you create ozone from just from the atmosphere, you create nitrous oxide, which is dangerous. So 20 years go by, so we're now in 1940. Another scientist said, well, the mistake you made was making ozone out of the atmosphere. You have to make ozone out of pure oxygen. So he made it out of pure oxygen. And one of those two scientists read his report, went back and did the exact same study that he'd done 20 years earlier using pure oxygen, not using the atmosphere. So no nitrous oxide was created. It would just create a pure ozone. And he realized that it wasn't dangerous. What the FDA has done is they've based it on the first study and they haven't really understood that the, one of the two scientists that actually came up with that study realized the error of making ozone out of the atmosphere. You don't make it out of the atmosphere. The medical doctors make it out of pure oxygen. They're not making it, so there's no nitrous oxide involved. So that's really the history of it. It's, it's, uh, how, it's a how did, how did Tesla, what was his process? Tesla had an ozone generator. So I, I would say Tesla, unfortunately, would be, you know, his ozone machines would create also nitrous oxide. Um, now, I think at some point, uh, the medical doctors, particularly in Germany, began to understand we can use Tesla's machine and hook it up to pure oxygen so we don't run into that problem. But initially, his, his uh, machine was taking it out of the atmosphere. It was based on Simmons, who, who had an ozone machine in the 1850s. Simmons was an electrical engineer who was kind of a hero for Tesla. And they were studying even in, in back in the 1850s that it was disinfecting uh, bacteria. And in the 1880s, they were taking human blood 
and disinfecting the blood. And, you know, we, we have the problem, you know, with, with AIDS, you know, or whatever. We inject, you know, if you have blood from other people, is there anything problem? So ozone is a good way to purify all bloods. Um, and so they were doing this all the way back in the 1880s. So there's a, a, a two, 200 year history of uh, studying this, uh, which I, you know, I get into in the history of it. So the, uh, so ozone is used commercially, is used to clean surfaces and locations, but the, the issue that ozone has in terms of getting more of a uh, kind of a certification, if you will, to be used uh, by individuals is that the individual aspect of it, injecting it or taking it uh, orally or whatever, is a is a no no be, because of the various reasons that you mentioned. Going forward, then, do you see a time in the next ten years or so, Mark, where you know you're getting cannabis ozone infused can you know gummies or or whatever? Do you see a more of a, an acceptance and a commercialization of of ozone the same way you know because you can take iodine. Yeah, I kind of liken it to the uh, digital photography. Uh, we all you know, remember Kodak. You'd wait two weeks for your for your, 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 your <laughs> pictures to come back, right? Now, boom, boom, boom. We all have it immediately. Um, I think ozone is so important, and it's kind of like what digital photography is going to do to, uh, you know, Kodak. Ozone therapy will do to the medical community because it can treat, you know, West Nile. It can treat hepatitis. Lyme disease. I mean, there's so many diseases that it can help uh, treat, and it's it's kind of a threat to big pharma. So I think there will be a, a, a shift, and I think that's what will happen. Well, for um, what do you think will cause the the breakthrough? I'm hoping I'm going to cause that breakthrough. I I did get a letter from Senator Sheldon Whitehouse. He got my book, and he and he thanked me for the book. I sent it out to uh, Bernie Sanders. I sent it out to President Biden, Kamala Harris, um, I'm on my list. Um, I'm not Republican and Democrat. I don't, I sent one out to Mitt Romney. And, and uh, to me. And to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is not a Republican or Democrat thing. It's, uh, it all I mean, comes down to one sentence, really. It comes down to a single sentence. The FDA ozone is a medical gas, is a toxic gas with no medical application. If that is not true, which it isn't true. I want Congress to simply look at that FDA sentence and see whether or not it's true or not true. Call in the experts, and they're going to find it's not true. And I think that that will be the will break the dam. So I'm hoping that I will help lead that charge. Have Have you received any response from this, from well, your uh, your overtures? Uh, the one response I got it was from Sheldon Whitehouse that he received the book and he's promising to read it. But I have sent out hundreds and hundreds of letters, uh, even uh, to, the, you know, I had an ad that I put in the New York Times that quoted three medical doctors saying this is a good book and ozone therapy is, is a good way, you know, what, to- What, what was the response? Them. What Did you get a response on that? Yeah, they rejected the ad. And uh, they said it didn't meet their standards. Well, if their standards are three medical doctors <laughs> suggesting that this is a good thing and that doesn't meet their standards, so I wrote to the editor in chief of the New York Times, and I and I'm you know asking how can how can you you know you guys have to look for the truth, uh, what is the truth here? You're being did uh, they respond? No, I have not gotten response yet, but I wrote to Frontline uh, and, I, and I sent copies, and I cc. Yeah. How joke. about have you gone to like uh, some of the alternative uh, news organizations like a, like a Gaia or Vice or any of those? Frontline, um, have you gotten any type of uh, feedback? So far, no. I wrote to Rolling Stone. I wrote to uh, Mother Jones, um, uh, but uh, I haven't thought of Vice. Um, but the book has just come out, so it's it's, it's okay. brand new. When when you were pitching the uh, when you were working on the book, um, did you get any pushback from the medical community in terms of uh, not the medical the publishing community in terms of? They their concern about the medical community and the FDA, et cetera, having a problem with this. Yes, the book got rejected by uh, Random House, Simon Schuster, and on and on and on, all the big publishers. It's now being distributed by Simon Schuster because Simon Schuster distributes in the traditions, which is uh, mm -hmm. well, right. But uh, the guy who bought the Tesla book back in, in 1992, um, I wrote to him. 
he, he, he was the editor in chief of, of one of the publishing houses uh, and that publishing house fired him and, and I lost my contract with that publishing house and then eventually got picked up by another publishing house and then Kensington picked it up. So I wrote to the original guy and he picked apart, you know, he said, you got to, you have a, uh, a um, clinical study that only has 18 people in it. Uh, I said, <laughs> yeah, I know it's only 18 people, but it's dramatic in, in its response. So uh, there were all been, uh, I think, uh, I hate to use the word brainwash, but I think the editors in chief of uh, the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, I've sent a lot of this information to all these places and none of them will report it. And uh, I've been, I've written Anderson Cooper, I don't know how many times, I never get a response. Um, so, uh, but when you and I were talking, I, th I knew you'd be open to it because you're open to health and you're open to the truth. Um, and so uh, so that's, I just keep knocking and knocking and knocking and, and doing my best. And fortunately, John Graham and, and, and he had Sperling, the, the two people that, you know, uh, decided to pick up this book um, are very, you know, I'm very thankful to them. But what's so interesting about this, Robert, it comes down to one person. You know, John Graham read, read the manuscript, said, let's do it. One person. Um, and, and I think one person can make a difference in this world. And I've been trying, you know, with this book to make that difference. Because all it is, it's just, it's just positive stuff. It's protecting our planet, you know? Okay. It's, it's a good thing. Okay, so for, uh, first of all, thank you for the work you're doing. Um, and where can people find out more about this work? Well, as I said, uh, Frank Schellenberger has a, a, a uh, excellent uh, newsletter. Uh, Dr. Robert Rowan has a, a, a newsletter that he also produces. Uh, he's in Santa Rosa. Uh, the book, where, where can they pick up the book? Is it strictly online or can they go to the bookstore? It's in bookstores all over the place. It's okay. distributed by Simon and & Schuster um, and okay. it's at Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Very good. All right. Well, thank you again, Mark. Uh, welcome back to Guys Guys Radio and good job. And I know it's a controversial, sticky subject and stay safe and uh, keep doing the good work you're doing because I know your intention is to help mankind and sometimes uh, change is, takes time. So uh, be patient and uh, take care of yourself. And thank you for being back with us on Guys Guys Radio. Thank you so much, Robert. I appreciate very much you having me on. For the guests and content I bring you each and every week to Guys Guys Radio and Guys Guys TV, please support us by following and subscribing to our channels. Thank you.